Hey guys, Marty Miller here again. And uh, this week and for the next successive weeks, I'm going to be kind of painting a very simple but profound picture of what it means to be a strong man of God. Because that's really what Blueprint for Men, this ministry is all about. It's how can we as godly men become more like Jesus? He is the blueprint for men. So we've got to distill it down to some easy concepts that will challenge us for the days we live in today. So as I've perused scripture over the years, I really find that there's one that speaks to my heart, and I'm going to be speaking to you about that, okay? And it has to do with really what is a man? So here we go. It's 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. It's a verse and a passage that you should be quite familiar with. And it's, hey, I, I've got it memorized, but it's, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and in other translations it is, be courageous, and then after that, act like men, it's be strong, and then verse 14 is really critical, and that is, let everything you do be done in love. So what I'm going to be really kind of breaking down today is just that first two words. And I don't know if I, I, I speak just for myself, but I don't think so. Most of us guys do our best work when we focus. So this, this first two word combo is rich in meaning. And the first two word combo is be watchful. So what does it mean to be watchful? Well, first of all, you're thinking of vision and your eyes. And, you know, it's kind of ironic this week that I actually went in to have my eyes checked. And uh, all of us, as we get older, our, our vision starts becoming less dependable. And my eyes have been bothering me recently, kind of just kind of some puffiness, irritation, and early in the morning, particularly just kind of a blurriness. And couldn't quite figure it out. So when I went in, the ophthalmologist, he checked my eyes out, did a great job. And he said, well, you've got a problem with your oil glands, your oil ducts. And it, there are oil ducts in your eyelids, your lower eyelids. And what that does is gives you lubrication for your eyes. Not only do your tears lubricate, but the oil slows the evaporation and gives you clarity. Our eyes are created amazing, as we know, and their proper functioning gives us many joys of life. I mean, everything from the smile of a child to a sunset to just doing what I'm doing right now. Everything involves vision. I can't imagine a world where I couldn't see. It'd be a, a real loss. So anyway, this whole idea of being watchful has to do with vision, but it's especially vision in darkness. It's to be alert. You see this word watch, I mean, I, I wear a watch. We talk about watches and all this kind of stuff, but it goes back to the old days where guards and sentries would be set around an encampment, maybe a city, the walls, the gates, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, guarding for any danger. And so they must stay alert at all times. This was punishable by death. If you were to actually fall asleep while being on watch, it was usually execution. So this was something serious. So for us as men, we need to be watchful. We need to be alert. We need to be aware. We need to be prepared. There's so much here. So, you know, when I was thinking about this, what are we being prepared for? What are we looking for? Well, there's danger, all right? That's really ultimately what we're talking about. Now, you go back to the Garden of Eden. Did they need to be watchful before sin? Yes, they did. It goes all the way back to the earliest time. In fact, Adam and Eve, the reason that they fell into sin 
is they were not watchful. They were not alert to the danger that was presented at that tree, the real truth of the matter, that if they ate of that tree, they would surely die. They became comfortable in that tree being in the midst of the garden. I, I just really believe that's the way it is with any of us. We become familiar with temptations. We become familiar with the, the situations in the world today. And in that comfort and complacency is the danger. So let me ask you as a man, are you watchful? Are you really aware of the dangers? You know, in stories, stories always are centered around some kind of conflict, some kind of man against nature, man against man, man against himself. Those are the different kind of conflicts that can go on. But there's there's another one that is the deepest level, and that is man against the spiritual darkness, right? I mean, we know that the Bible gives reference in Ephesians 6, 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. This is not something that is in the physical realm. Most of us guys get the physical realm. You know, I've got a gun. I'm going to protect my family, my home, my stuff. But Jesus made it clear, you know, fear that which can kill the soul. Basically, the body is just a temporary situation. What we possess is all temporary. Someday you and I will die and all that we own, all that we are will be gone. It's we're a vapor. So our real effort in being watchful should be very acute to the darkness of the world. So back to vision. Vision is something that requires light. Now, when I think about all of this uh, metaphorical talk about being watchful in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm, you know, I think about special forces, for example. You know, they've got night vision. They can see in the darkness. Now, there's two kinds of night vision. One is that it amplifies the dim light that's there. And then the other one is that it sees heat. Okay, so it's looking in the infrared. So, nevertheless, you can see in the darkness. Now, you can shine a light into the darkness, but that would expose your position, right? It's made me think about this. You know, as a Christian man in the workplace, wherever I'm at, you know, some people like to wear the t-shirts and the bumper stickers and all that kind of stuff that promotes their Christian message. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing that. But I think sometimes that kind of shining a light can actually be unwise. Um, I, I don't know. I think that the greatest way to shine the light is by our actual actions and by being able to see into the darkness and see things truly as they are. You see, when I, when I look at every man, as you should, we see beyond that physical realm, that, that first layer of the obvious, what somebody wears, what somebody does. There's a heart that is waiting to be spoken to and redeemed, okay? So think of that. Now, also going to the military around, this is kind of cool. We've got the SR-71 Blackbird. Do you know that that thing, as fast as it was and for all of its really crazy look, it really was just a flying camera? I, I mean, let's be real. It was for reconnaissance. It had no real weapons on it. Of course, it could outrun just about anything. But nevertheless, the SR-71 Blackbird was an impressive flying machine, way high above the earth, taking pictures, coming back and revealing what was being scoped out. And, you know, I think that, you know, when I think of this metaphor, I think about, okay, am I just so cluttered on the ground with the distractions? You see, that's, that's one thing that the enemy will do is he will distract. I can have my eyes wide open. I could, it could be middle of the day, 
But through distraction, the enemy can make me not aware of situations. We can all find ourselves in those kind of times that things are good, but you're distracted. And so you're not watchful. Now, if we want to take it to another level, then we've got spy satellites that are up there in the space all the time taking pictures. And then we have the space telescopes that we have today that can look to the edges of the universe. Our vision has expanded over the centuries, and it's it's amazing what we have discovered because we are watchful, we're looking, we're trying to understand things in the physical realm. But in that effort, have we maybe lost some of our spiritual focus because we're so distracted by the physical? Now, God gives us spiritual eyes. I had a, heard a sermon recently, and it was all about that, having the eyes of Christ to see things. Not only the danger, but also the blessings, the opportunities. So this watchfulness is not just danger, it's opportunities that we can reach out and do good things. Because in the end, if you are just going to be standing in, in fear you're not living out your faith as a strong man of God, because a strong man of God is not living in fear. He's living out of confidence, even in the darkest of times. I know that all of us struggle with fear and anxiety. It's just man's condition. Every time an angel would come and appear to one of the men of God in, in days past, it was always fear not. God doesn't want us to live in fear. And I would say that this whole watchfulness summarized is being prepared, okay, being alert, and then not being fearful. You're seeing what is truly there. You see beyond the physical. You're seeing into the spiritual. And again, we as men are to guard our hearts because really if the ultimate battleground is our heart that's what we need to be watchful of more than anything what's coming out of my mouth what's coming out of my actions that has to be the paramount thing dangers out there weather tornadoes wars all of that's most of that is not the condition on which we will be judged and has the eternal consequence. It's how we live out our lives. Do we have the fruit of the Spirit? I know I'm kind of going along on this, but this has been a tremendous study just in being watchful. So as I wrap up here, I just want to have a prayer that will encourage you to be watchful. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to model the hand prayer here. This is something that, uh, we do quite a bit in blueprint for men is use this framework and I'm going to be praying for you. Okay. I'm going to be praying for me too, but the thumbs up, that's encouragement, finger of direction and correction, the zinger finger how the enemy's coming against us, guys. The ring finger, we're not going to quit. That That is such a huge part of being a man. We don't quit. And then finally, the pinky finger is the weaknesses in life are overcome through God's strength and through coming together with other men through the church of God, through small groups, in your marriage, in your family, whatever. We, we are stronger together. And so let me pray a prayer for you today. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for another day of life. And, and, and Lord, I know that there's a few men that are watching this, this video. And I just want to pray, especially on this regard of being watchful, that they will keep their eyes on you, that this, this is the thumbs up message, that you are the 
their creator, they're their, your redeemer of their life, and that you have created them with tremendous capacity to do good. Help them to see all the blessings and live a life of thankfulness and gratitude and optimism. That, that needs to be such a high priority for a man. So I'm praying for that for every man that's listening to my prayer, that they will sense and, and embrace that you're a good God and they created, that you created them to be powerful men of God, a force in this world for doing good. And then number two, the finger of direction, that these men will have humility to listen to your voice. Maybe listen to their spouse, their, wi their, their wife's direction as well, to seek the direction of others and correction. Sometimes we need that, Lord. We need those hard things. And then the middle finger, the zinger finger, Lord, the enemy is always coming against us in our headspace, through temptations, through negative talk. And may we keep all those things down with a thumb of encouragement, which is your word, the truth in your voice through the Holy Spirit. May we arrest any of those negative thoughts that come against us that are in our head, those strongholds. May we cast those down with your word through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, also I pray that each man that's listening to this prayer will feel empowered to do the hard things and not quit, to not cave in to temptation, to not quit on relationships, but to just keep going through your strength. And then finally, the pinky finger. Lord, I just pray that each man in the weakness that they're experiencing, maybe right now, will lean into you because of that weakness. They'll lean into you because of that weakness. And out of that, they will get their strength. They will lean into the strength of others. And together with others, they will be stronger. That's really the gospel message. And so, Lord, I just pray for each man today. May each man today be watchful, alert, and not slumber in these dark times. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I know that was kind of long, but I'm telling you, it's a great message. Bask in that, soak it in, and live it out. God bless. See you soon.